God to you, all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Ascribe to the Lord, you gods, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord, glory and beauty of his name. Worship the Lord and the beauty of holiness. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters, the God of glory thunders. The Lord is upon the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is the power of the voices. The voice of the Lord is the voice of the voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon sick like a cat, and not burn like a mountain The voice of the Lord splits the flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the old trees die. And in the temple of the Lord, all are crying glory. The Lord sits in the throne of the Father. The Lord sits in the throne of his kingdom forevermore. The Lord shall give strength to his people. 
The Lord shall give his people the blessing of peace. Reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When Apollos was in Corinth, Paul passed through the interior regions and came to Ephesus, where he found some disciples. He said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you became believers? They replied, No, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Then he said, Into what then were you baptized? They answered, Into John's baptism. Paul said, John baptized with the baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in the one who was to come after him, that is, in Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke in tongues and prophecy, although there were about twelve of them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Automobile. 
I love cars. I always have and probably always will. And I watch a lot of car shows. One of my favorites was the original Top Gear. I like the presenters. Clarkson's a little rough around the edges. Hammond is kind of, well, he crashes a lot. My favorite is James May. May has a command of the English language that I wish I had. When referring to the Mercedes AMG GTR, which is a ridiculously high horsepower car, $200,000, goes like stink in a straight line, doesn't corner particularly well. James May referred to it as an ostentatious vulgarity for drivers consumed with self-doubt. A real knuckle driver's car. He just uses the English language in such great ways. Lately, he has branched off from the car stuff and started doing sort of like travel videos. If you have Amazon Prime, you can see James May, our man in Japan. It was actually very good. He traveled from the very top of Japan to the very bottom, watched the climate change completely, and it's just a wonderfully rewarding show to watch. I highly recommend it. The second one in his series of Our Man In was Our Man in Italy, and that one's worth watching too, also on Prime. The new one that just came out is James May, Our Man in India. And I gotta tell you, it's fascinating. And he's been touching on some of the stuff that's going on in India that has to do with religion, where the country is predominantly Hindu. For instance, he starts talking about the Hindu godhead of three. Now, where have I heard that before? And they are Krishna, Shiva, and Brahma, not necessarily in that order. The Hindus have 330 million gods. That's because they're pantheistic, which basically means they see God in everything. A blade of grass, a tree, 330 million of them. And between January 9th and the 18th of every year is a celebration, a festival in India called Holi. Not H-O-L-Y, H-O-L-I. And it is incumbent upon those who can make the trip to travel to the river Ganges and be immersed in the river fully. When you arise up out of the water, you are cleansed of your sins. Where have we heard that before? It's interesting to see that religions are all very similar and have a lot of rituals that overlap. Today, on this first Sunday in the season of Epiphany in the year 2024, we in the Western Church celebrate the baptism of our Lord. Such is the importance of this event that it is often seen as the theological beginning to Jesus' earthly ministry. In comparison, the Eastern Church, now we're back into Christianity, looks on the whole season of Epiphany as a celebration of the baptism of our Lord. In fact, the origin of the Feast of Epiphany lies in the Eastern Church's celebration of Christ's incarnation. And because the baptism of our Lord was a public event, we believe that baptisms should always take place in the setting of our corporate worship. And this has been enforced, more or less, since the arrival of the 1979 Book of Common Prayer. The 1928, its predecessor, had provisions for private baptism. We don't really do that anymore. However, there can be pastoral exceptions. I baptized a baby that was about two or three weeks old that had had a heart transplant pretty much right after it was born. 
So its immune system was completely compromised and couldn't really be around a lot of people. So we did that baptism privately with like three people, the parents, the baby, and me. And that's understandable. Again, pastoral reasons. Martin Luther believed that baptism is something done in the church in one day, yet it takes the rest of one's life to complete. Baptism is the initiating sacrament of the church that many of us received as infants, so we probably don't remember it. It is unrepeatable. What does that mean? Well, there are a lot of important instructions on page 298 of the Book of Common Prayer, which I encourage you at some point to read. It says in there that baptism is indissoluble, which basically means once it's done, it can't be undone. And that's okay with me. <laughs> Such is the significance of the event of baptism that we do it because Jesus is command to us was that we should. Matthew 28 verses 16 through 20 there are what we call the great commandment. It says, Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him. But some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. So those instructions on page 298 are so important that there's two more pages of instructions about baptism on pages 312 through 313. So I would recommend at some point you read those, perhaps in your Book of Common Prayer that you keep by your bed at home. <laughs> A wise man once said that it's okay if the Books of Common Prayer in the church look kind of dark in the middle, soiled a little bit on the edges, where Holy Eucharist is, right one and right two. As long as the one you keep at home is soiled in the other areas. Yes. So, the other important sacrament that goes hand in hand with baptism is the Holy Eucharist. The Eucharist is ongoing. It is seen as the sustaining sacrament. And while baptism may put us in the driver's seat of the car, the Eucharist is the fuel that keeps it running. Thanks to the Gospels of Mark, Matthew, and Luke, we know a fair amount about the baptism of our Lord by John. As we heard throughout Advent, John had prepared the way for the Messiah to come. The one whose sandal he says he's not worthy to untie. One whom he is essentially not even worthy to serve. This is an important piece of the puzzle. Because for centuries, the early church struggled with the concept that in some way Jesus was subservient to John, that he needed John to baptize him. This was problematic because it gave the inference that in some way Jesus had obeyed John's call to the confession of sins and the subsequent return to God. He didn't need that. He was God. This was something that Jesus would not have been required to do because not only was he the Son of God, he was also living on earth without sin. So there would have been no reason for him to come to John in any such way. Jesus allowed himself to be baptized by John for several reasons. One is that being baptized was the first step that Jesus would take in fulfilling his earthly mission. A mission that included 
fully identifying with our humanity and therefore also our sin. Now, as I've already mentioned, the baptism of our Lord officially announces the beginning of his ministry. Also, by submitting to the ritual, Jesus endorsed its overall purpose and set the example for us to follow. Baptism now serves as the single rite of Christian initiation. Lastly, Jesus was baptized for the sins of the whole world, not his own. The one sinless and perfect man, the Son of God, accepted baptism for our sins and on our behalf. <coughs> on such an occasion as this, we are each called to remember our own baptism, through which we are all made a new people by water, in Jesus Christ, and by the Holy Spirit. So, today, as is the tradition in many Christian churches, we will replace the Nicene Creed with the renewal of our own baptismal vows taken from the Easter Vigil service. Don't worry, I'll announce the page. Because our Lord was baptized by John in the River Jordan, we now have this wonderful sacrament that in the words of our catechism states, holy baptism is the sacrament by which God adopts us as his children and makes us members of Christ's body, the church, and inheritors of the kingdom of God. Furthermore, the inward and spiritual grace given in baptism is union with Christ in his death and resurrection birth into God's family of the church, forgiveness of sins, and a new life in the Holy Spirit. While it is important to recognize that Christians can see their own baptism foreshadowed in the baptism of Jesus by John, the Gospels of Luke and Mark make it clear that the function of the Holy Spirit was essential at that moment in the River Jordan. The work of the Holy Spirit in baptism is completely inseparable from the work of the one performing the baptism. The Holy Spirit's appearance at our Lord's baptism in the form of a dove showed the world that God's plan for our ultimate salvation is centered completely in Jesus Christ. Isaiah's prediction of the voice of one crying in the wilderness translates more accurately to one preparing a way in the desert. John had prepared the way for the Messiah to come, the one whose sandal he's not worthy to untie. John baptizes Jesus in the River Jordan in water, and we, on such an occasion as this, are each called to remember our own baptism. While this unique event officially announces the beginning of Jesus' ministry, it also prepares us for what we will hear over the coming weeks as we move through Epiphany towards the transfiguration of Jesus, then into Lent, and then into his Passion. And Lent is early this year. I'll leave you with this closing thought. The story is told about the baptism of King Angus by St. Patrick in the middle of the 5th century. Sometime during the rite, St. Patrick leaned on his sharp pointed staff that inadvertently stabbed the king's foot. After the baptism was over, St. Patrick looked down at the blood on the floor, realized what he had done, and begged for the king's forgiveness. Why did you suffer this pain in silence, the saint wanted to know? The king replied, I thought it was part of the ritual. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So, oh.
let us stand and turn to page 292 in the Book of Common Prayer. The Red Book. Two ninety-two. Towards the bottom. Do you reaffirm your renunciation of evil and renew your commitment to Jesus Christ? Yes. Do. do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God, God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son of God. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, and died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and dead. Do you believe in God the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit. The Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread, and in the prayers? I will, God's so. help. Will you persevere in resisting evil? And whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord. I will, God's so. help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will, with God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will, with God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I will, with God's help. May Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit and bestowed upon us the forgiveness of sins, keep us in eternal life by His grace in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. church and for the whole world. Grant Almighty God that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, guide the people of this land and all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a give us all reverence for your earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. We pray thanksgiving for the support and for the work of our ministry task forces, outreach ministries, for stewardship, for the prospects of new growth, for the spiritual gifts of hospitality giving and faith. We pray for all the blessings in our own lives. For snow. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Bless all those lives that are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. We bid you prayers for the patriarchs of the Universal Church. We pray for Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, for Michael, our presiding bishop, and for Matthew, our assistant bishop. For the Standing Committee and the clergy of the Diocese of Milwaukee, for our celebrant, Father Nigel, and for Karen Egan, and all bishops on it, other ministers. In the Anglican Cycle of Prayer, We pray for the Scottish Episcopal Church. In our diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for St. Paul's Beloit. In our parish cycle of prayer, we pray for Father Michael Parks. We pray for 
to our companion diocese, diocese of Nawala in Tanzania. We pray for our covenant here of St. Peter's Roman Catholic Church, their clergy and parishioners. We pray for those who are unemployed that they may find jobs. We pray for those in the armed forces that they may find peace and be brought home safely. We pray for Derek. We pray for the Ukraine. We pray for Israel. We pray for at the end of gun violence. O Lord, in your mercy, your offer, comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them the courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. We pray especially for Mary, Barbara, Jeanette, Ruth, Lee, Fred, Jill, Daisy, Rita, Marianne, Manfred, and Steve and Martha, and those who may act. Lord, in your mercy, we, are in prayer. we commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. We pray for Chris, Paul, Paula, Jerry, Skip, Ethan Wong, Lorelai, Muriel, Albert, Rosemary, Bill, Alvin, Virginia, Mary, Edward, Richard, and those who not we now add either silently or aloud. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Almighty and ever living God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, hear our prayers for this parish family. Strengthen the faithful, arouse the careless, and restore the penitents. Grant us all things necessary for our common life, and bring us all to be of one heart and mind within your holy church through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole hearts, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Peace of the Lord be always with you. <laughs> Please be seated. I've actually attended a, a couple, three or so, of Scottish Episcopal churches on trips to Scotland. I was on the Isle of Iona one time, went to Mass at a Scottish Episcopal church, and the priest showed up in a black clergy shirt with a collar and a kilt. <laughs> yeah, it was quite a sight. First Sunday of the month. Blessings at the altar rail, anybody? I lay my hands upon you and anoint you with oil in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, beseeching him to uphold you and fill you with his grace, that you may know the healing power of his love. I lay my hands upon you and anoint you with oil in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, Beseeching him to uphold you and fill you with his grace that you may know the healing power of his love. Amen. Okay. Uh, Birthdays, anniversaries. Hey, 
Any announcements, Steve? Lori has one. Oh, Lori has one. I, um, these 27 is going to be taken home today, and they're going to be at 3 to the home. And the sign-up sheet for all the flowers is out there on the website. I think it's the first day, right? And those two days before, you can sign up for these thousands of flowers. So please take the poinsettias home. I should have dogs. What about cats? You know, dogs can't eat poinsettias. Anything else, David? You got anything for us? Walk in love as Christ loved us. He gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God.
is right to give thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, because in Jesus Christ our Lord, you have received us as your sons and daughters, made us citizens of your kingdom, and given us the Holy Spirit to guide us into all truth. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Against us, 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Sacrifice for us. Therefore, let us see peace. Hallelujah.
Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace, and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you now and remain with you all. Go in peace, love, and serve the Lord. Thanks. Amen.